Hey, welcome to Smart Attack. I'm here with Peter Sullivan. Peter, how are you? Great. It's good to see you again. Good to see <laughs> you really again. Yeah, you. I had you on episode, let me look at it, episode number 23. It's almost two years and a half ago at the beginning of this podcast. And now we have uh, the video version, which is, I think, a big improvement. We have a lot of people watching on YouTube or other alternative media channels because I don't know for how long YouTube will stay up. But for the moment, we're still within the guidelines. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we want to focus or actually you, you told me you wanted to focus on solutions and also recovery from electro hypersensitivity. You can call it, uh, I don't know, what term do you prefer, by the way? Let, let's start with that. I think it's just a little bit, what term do you prefer? Electrosensitivity uh, or microwave illness? Because there's pros and cons, I think, for for either for one. I've also heard environmental illness, actually. Environmental like illness, one. yeah. I would say, let's say environmental illness, because one of the caveats, one of the things I'm going to talk about is it's don't don't focus on just one thing. Yeah. That it's usually a state of overload, and if you don't, you know, if you're, you could be in a, a mold house that's contributing, you could have Lyme disease. So we'll get yeah. into that. So I guess I'm going to just start out and saying. The caveat is this is not medical advice. <laughs> sure. So, um, you know, I'm going to give you my point of view. I get some cutting edge. I get to do some funding and work with people at Harvard and Berkeley and Stanford. And so, um, and a lot of cutting edge biohackers and everything. And so I get, uh, and a lot, and I have a network of people who are sensitive, uh, including myself. And so I'll just say this is, and it's not a permanent extensive review of the market. It's just kind of, it's what I have. And I would just say I, most of the time I've, I've reviewed more things than other people. So I'm just going to give you what I've got. It's not going to be perfect. Um, they're, they're my opinions. It's not a double blind placebo test. But, um, you know, this is kind of, a, we're not at that state. We don't have it. And, and right now we just need to share information and get solutions out there. So we've done a lot of, we've done, you and I have talked about solutions for the future and where we need to go with safe tech. And we've yep. done a ton of podcasts on how to reduce your exposure. So I'm mm -hmm. going to try to bring in a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit more deep juice um, and things that other people don't talk about. So, um, you know, there are so many effects that in with the exposure, whether you call it microwave illness or environmental illness, that we've got blood clumping, we've got oxidative stress, we've got DNA damage. I think one of the most interesting things is it's hard to even know where to start, right? And I think <laughs> yeah, it, I, I, it's overwhelming. So what do you focus on? Um, what are your biomarkers, et cetera? Um, one, it was interesting. I heard um, Magna Havas at one talk say she actually co cons considered it accelerated aging, which I thought was a nice paradigm. And it actually makes it really hard because people, we get these exposures, we just think, well, I'm getting older, but you're actually getting older at a rate that's not normal. Mm -hmm. And how do you compare you know, How do you compare it? So it's like you're in an environment with higher level of entropy. Um, so think that, I think that's a nice way of, pu of putting it. Um, so clearly step one is reduce your exposure. And we've got tons of talks on that, you know, getting rid of 5G. But I would say don't just reduce your exposure to, um, to wireless. There are other factors too. Uh, let's say uh, mold uh, and, you know, even trauma, emotional stressors, um, Lyme disease has been a cofactor Dr. Klinghart talks about. So mm -hmm. don't, don't even, don't, don't dis discount infectious disease, which I did for the longest time. Um, let's see. And I think, so step one is get into a safe environment. This is a pretty safe environment right now. I've got this dialed in my, uh, let's see. I'm less than one microwatt, and I'm pretty psyched about that. Um, this is and I've low. got a demand switch. Yeah. I know. It's awesome. No yeah. shielding. This is fantastic. So this is without shielding here in Western Connecticut is much better than my shielded place in California. Um, gotcha. So that's fantastic. So you get into a safe environment, which most people are not in. And, uh, and then you want to confirm that. If you think you're in a safe environment, have somebody like a building biologist or a... Um, some sort of EMF expert check it out for you, or even another electrosensitive person who's really sensitive might come in and say, oh, I smell mold here or something, or there's, you've got a horrible light flicker here or a big magnetic field. So um, get into that safe space. And then, then the next step, and this is not just for EMF recovery, this is for kind of a chronic disease in general. This is the process that we've been working on with autism. It's almost like, it's like treating people like um, war soldiers coming back from the war. Step one is you get them out of the war zone. Mm. And then step two is they have to actually feel safe. So you get them out of the war zone, they're shell-shocked. So people like Lisa Naj have been, who 
coined the term kind of more environmental illness. She says this is more like environmental post-traumatic stress. So you not only need to get them out of the environment, you still need to get them out of fight or flight mode. And, and your body is not designed to heal in fight or flight mode. You're, you know, you don't even, are you going to do DNA repair? You're, you're not going to do, um, you know, any sort of repair in that state. You're just trying to live. So, um, so you got to really kind of focus on getting back into the parasympathetic, working on vagal, ter- vagal tone, and even, you know, getting rid of traumas, not just from the environment, but like childhood traumas and car accidents and, for me, I was in a, a military flight accident where a plane caught on fire. So I've been doing a lot of trauma work lately, too. And that's been one of the components that and everybody's got everybody's dealing with this right now. And everyone's pretty overwhelmed. So I, and I think you're going to do better, too. Once you've kind of got into that, get into a safe environment, get your body out of fight, flow, fight or flight mode, which is a process and take some time to dial down. Uh, and then you're going to do better instead of with a conventional doctor. You're probably going to do better with like functional medicine or integrative doctor, or naturopath, or even environmental medicine doctor. And I think, and then, you know, really focusing on a whole range of factors like detox and infections and uh, diet, gut inflammation, you know, the whole range of kind of functional medicine approach or naturopath, naturopathic approaches. I think you'll do a better job, especially like reducing inflammation. Um, and then adding in the supportive supplements. Maybe you'll do like an NAD drip or something like Dr. Mercola has been big on the NAD for DNA repair. Um, and then another approach, I had somebody just submit a grant this year um, focusing on EHS, and they framed it as um, brain inflammation. And this is something I've mm-hmm. done when, I've, when I was working on, on autism for a while. I felt like that was too narrow. And I went into Stanford and Berkeley when we were doing funding, and I said, well, how do we make this a little more general? And we started focusing on what about brain inflammation? And I did a grant at Berkeley, and they focused on, they didn't want to do specifically information, they wanted to do neural resiliency. And we'll talk a little bit more about what they came up with. Um, Another paradigm that's been really useful for me, you know, we've got an electrical paradigm here, and we've got doctors trained in a chemical paradigm. So it's like having a chemical engineer look at your laptop and tell you what's going on. They have no clue. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And and it's sad. I would rather have an, I would rather have an, I think you'd be better off with an electrical engineer helping you than a doctor. <laughs> but there are some doctors who are, were electrical engineers undergrad, and they're awesome. They're rare, and they're spectacular. But the one who I really love is Dr. Jerry Tennant, who's done the book Healing mm. is Voltage. I don't know if you followed the protocol. Um, he has a book called Healing is Voltage, Cancer Polarities. And I've read the book for years. It's like a, I think it's a, like a recovery manual for all chronic illness. And it's pretty much, you know, you need, you need to make new cells to, rep- to heal. And he says, you know, your voltage is part of that process. I would say instead of healing his voltage, I would say your body's a battery. Every cell's a battery and they need to run at a certain voltage and so forth. So I've done I've done a great job um, recovering with his protocols. He also adds in a lot of talks about raw materials like, you know, the minerals, the lipids, the fulvic acid, getting all those things, adding in all these healthy raw materials to the body so you can make all the materials you need to make new cells. Um so that's fabulous. So that's those are kind of my those that's kind of the concept conceptual framework for recovery. And I think the areas that maybe we'll kind of narrow down on. I mean, there's so many things like blood clumping and so forth. But I think if we focus on inflammation, I think it's a I've had good good luck focusing on inflammation. And there's a lot of good information out there right now on inflammation. Even if you go to a conventional doctor and say, "Hey, I'm focusing on inflammation right now," and you can get some conventional markers and focus on that area. And it'll help not only right away, like I would go in, get an exposure, and I would come out with red ears. My ears would turn red. That was one of my tells. Mm. And so <laughs> uh, you'd get a headache, red ears, and um, I think, and we'll talk about that too. So that's like, you know, blood clumping immediately, but then inflammation. So, um, yeah, and so the blood, so yeah, it's just about kind of creating more space in your brain. Um, and surface area in your brain and, and creating space for the ventricles. So if you talk about neuroinflammation, there's been this big discovery about the glial lymphatic system, which you probably know about. So mm-hmm. basically, we didn't, we didn't know that the lymphatic system went up in the, in the brain. So what we know now is that the, the lymphatic system and the cerebral spinal fluid, the cerebral spinal fluid comes up into the brain. The, the brain is like a fish in a fish tank in bathing in the cerebral spinal fluid. 
at night, if you've got the lights off and you've fasted enough and all these things, your brain will shrink the glial cells, the supporting structures like sponges, and they'll shrink down. They create more space. The spreadable spinal fluid washes through and cleans out all the metabolites and toxins. And then you wake up in the morning and you feel fresh if you've done it correctly. And a lot of us are struggling with that and have struggled with that. So I want to focus on that um, effect. And a lot of and some of it is like draining. Dr. Klinghart's done a good I did a good video on this on draining. First, you have to really drain the neck on the left side. This has to be opened. And he's got some creams that you use and various techniques to open that up. Um, one of the other techniques, too, is that, I mean, certainly cranial sacral therapy uh, to make sure the cranial sacral pump is working correctly. So you need to make sure you shrink. And this is um, some of the work from uh, the end of Alzheimer's book, Dr. Bredesen. It talks about you need to fast three hours before bed so that your brain really starts to you know go into this into this mode and it's not you know you don't do a, you don't do something like sugar before bedtime or whatever so um fasting before bedtime everything shrinks the pump goes through and that's kind of like washes everything out um let's see and then i think also too you it's you, you clearly need to be in you know, if you're in fight or flight mode, your body thinks you're going to get attacked that night, too. So you really need to be parasympathetic and, you know, doing like what you're doing with the glasses. You know, I kind of wind down and dial down things with red glasses or just, you know, dial down the lights a little bit or with the, you know, the yellow glasses, the red glasses, everything at night to, uh, well, preserving melatonin, which is, again, one of the things that's helping with inflammation. Yeah. You need to avoid the blue light, but then... Strangely, during the day, you want light exposure because that helps you cr uh, produce melatonin. That's one of your big, um, your brain inflammatory factors. Now, a lot of people have been taking uh, supplemental melatonin in super doses. And, you know, the latest folks is like the Dr. Uberman, Uberman podcast. Matt Walker, who's the sleep expert at, at Berkeley, wrote Why We Sleep, his fabulous book. They're saying, actually, the research on extra melatonin is not that great for sleep improvement. You know, short term for travel, maybe, but not great for reproductive organs, not a great impact. Uh, actually, they're, they're the things that they they didn't believe would work, but found science around was uh, tart cherry juice and okay. uh, kiwi, which I've tried both of them now. And I'm I'm actually sleeping great with the tart cherries, the main one. I haven't been doing the kiwi so much, but I've been not I stopped the melatonin and I've been doing the and those and it's really helped my sleep um what else uh a trauma again you know, some people are not sleeping because they're traumatized and they're you know so had to do a lot of work with this love the book you know the body keeps the score um Harvard doctor um a lot of a lot of work with uh veterans and a lot of different you know st strategies looking at EMDR and ketamine and all these different techniques, uh, MDMA, all these hardcore things. But there's some simple things you can start with. Um, you know, br breathing exercise, there's a lot of breath work you can be done. But I think the easy ones are, um, there's a, a vagal nerve reset that you can do. It's kind of like EMDR if you've done that, which is eyes to the left, keep your head forward, lay on your back, knees up, eyes to the left for 30 seconds all the way, and then eyes to the right all the way for 30 seconds. And that's like a reset. That's like rebooting your computer to help trying to clear really? trauma. The, it's fabulous. And, and, you know, so there's a video that I've linked. I've got a document here. I've got all the links for this. Um, the, yeah, it's, um, that's a YouTube video, very simple. But the book about it is called Accessing the Healing Power of the Vagal Nerve. And it really gets into more incredible detail about, you know, even like working with autistic kids whose faces might be offline, you know, again, it's one of the factors with autism and every and everybody. If you're in fight or flight mode, everything's a threat to you. Human beings are a threat. So mm -hmm. you're not facial expression and so forth is not a thing. Um, you're not going to be doing oxytocin and trying to create a loving experience. So you want to get into sympathetic and they've got all these exercises for kind of moving your head around and getting you out of these mostly freeze responses. So it's not just fight or flight, but there's a freeze response. And some of the freeze response is like holding your breath. So they've been, that new book on breath, um, freaking the author's name is um, uh, Nash, Nash or somebody is talking about the email, um, email apnea where people are holding their breath while they're doing their email. So it's like they're in fight or flight mode from the stress wow. of the email or the screen flicker or the EMF, right? There's a yeah. lot going, there's a lot going on here. And, and just the fixated attention on a small thing. So getting people breathing correctly uh, is really interesting. Um, 
So that's kind of the vagal nerve. That's getting the autonomic nerve system kind of out, you know, back. I think, honestly, a great analogy is like having a car that you think you might think you're broken, but it's actually like your car's fine. You're just driving in first gear. You're driving in the wrong gear. And if you get your nervous system into the right state and you're, and you're actually safe, you, know, you're, you can get you can kind of start catching up. It's like, a, again, it's a state of overload. It's like being in debt or, you know, whatever, or keeping up with your home repairs or your to-do list. So um, let's get into some some solutions for recovery, which I think are quite interesting. So I talked a little bit about Dr. Tennant's book. He's got a protocol. He's got some devices. I've used those for years, used them at the EMF conferences with some really sensitive people, got some really good results. Um, his, it's, it's tricky, though. He um, it, This stuff's kind of expensive. You know, like it, I'm in for it was like five to five to nine thousand dollars worth of stuff. Wow. And so your average electrosensitive person is not going to do it. And I was like, like, how do we bring this to a, you know, a a group of people that, you know, sometimes doesn't have, sometimes can't work because they're so impaired. And how do you scale this? So I've in the last year, about a, a little less than a year ago, uh, my local doctor here in Fairfield, Connecticut, was doing a protocol. And I just was, you know, and it's basically a biomagnet protocol. And it's by a doctor from New Jersey, Dr. Garcia, who's a conventional MD, who was looking for different alternatives and found this protocol in Mexico. And he's kind of been um, doing this in the U.S. now. And so this is this is his book. His website will be um, will be in the document I send you. And you basically these biomagnets in the body. Again, the body's a battery. Is different areas that are positively charged, or negatively charged. So conv- basically, what he's doing is like you put. Uh, let's say if you want to do your heart. Whoop. Siri, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I don't even know why it cued. Uh, so let's say you take the black side and put it on the right side and the red on the left. And that can be for, you know, your mouth, jaw, nose. There's a whole different list of protocols. Um, they've got some even for like the like the vagal nerve would be this on your neck. Mm. and you do it like 15 minutes, and then it balances the pH, which is pretty remarkable. So he's using very conventional measurements. Um, the most interesting, uh, he's got things that work on lymph. He's got a protocol that works on uh, brain encephalitis, which would be kind of these two spots up here, black on this side, red on this side. Again, for it depends apparently on your latitude. It's about 16 minutes in the New York area here. So if you put it on for 16, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, if you're farther north, um, it actually really helps. I, I've been really surprised. So uh, I had a couple different chronic infections going on. With I had a mono, so Epstein Barr. I had a little. My dad had TB, and I had a little. I was kind of testing for a little bit of TB epigenetically or something from him. So um, ended up doing a couple different protocols with that, and I was just I've been thrilled with that. So so that's that. And the magnets are pretty inexpensive for a pair. So I've got a whole. I got a, you can get a whole set of magnets for. You know, I think a pair is like 20 some dollars and there's different sizes wow. and whatever. So yeah. easy to play with, e- cheap and easy to play with. The book is like a hundred bucks. There's a PDF and the conventional book. So I haven't even gone to the training. There's a training too. It seems pretty simple, um, but I would at some point I'd like to go to the training. So that's been fantastic. And I, and I think uh, since doing that, um, matter of fact, the doctor I was working with felt that they use a form of muscle testing, you know, to, to figure things out. Some people are into that, some people aren't. But he was feeling that my electrosensitivity is related to some sort of virus, and he ended up finding a pair that worked for me. And, you know, honestly, I just feel more solid doing the magnets in general. I think, again, it's if you're trying to create more resiliency and you've got these electrical effects coming to you, if your body's a little bit more charged up, I would say the equivalent is, like, you know when you lift weights and you feel pumped up? Yep. and you feel just kind of solid, that effect, that's how you feel with the magnets and with some, with Dr. Tennant's work as well. When you're electrically charged up, you just feel a little more solid. Yeah, to to go to uh, electrical engineer engineering a little bit, um, Pavel Wibyshowski on my podcast talked about the signal-to-noise ratio exactly. uh, in, in the telecoms. And, and for people who don't know what that is, well, if you're in an environment where the noise is higher than the signal strength, the signal gets jammed, and that's actually how how you jam communications for the uh, enemy pilots, for example, in, in a war, for, exactly. uh, for planes, for example. So he, he talked about the fact that we have, you know, internal signals. And if the noise in the environment is too strong, then the body doesn't know really what to do. Uh, maybe the gut doesn't talk to the brain, etc. But exactly. if the signal is stronger inside your body, 
then maybe you know the noise isn't that uh, overwhelming anymore. Exactly. I actually had one group who told me, this resident physics group in, in Marin County, we were talking about electrosensitivity and looking at some of their tech, and they said they believed that electrosensitivity was a coherence problem, or as you said, an inner body communication problem. Mm -hmm. So this is another paradigm. It's like you have, a, I don't know how many cells, trillions of cells going on here, and they need to coordinate and talk. And, you know, when I you know start, first started doing autism work in the in you know, 2020, 2002, one of the first books I looked at was called The Out-of-Sync Child. And you look at it as an engineer and you say, well, okay, if this is a, a system that's trying to synchronize, as you said, how do you lower the noise and raise the signal? And I've got a couple other, and well, let me talk about that. So the doctor I work with at Harvard says, cross out the word inflammation. And, and from an electrical perspective, inflammation is resistance. Hmm. So it's like putting a speed bump in your system. So when you lower the electrical noise and you lower the inflammation um, and you raise the voltage uh, and you ground the body and you let it ground and you let it all that extra EMF go out of the body, the, the, those, um, that charge go out of the body, now you're, you're in better shape. So, um, so speaking of inflammation, I'll go through one of the other things that, that I played with is uh, called frequency specific microcurrent. I'd heard about it a long time ago. My dentist was playing with it. Again, my doctor out here had played with it and I had a lot of inflammation in my back and I had a nerve that had gone offline and a lot of inflammation in my neck. And they use 40 Hertz as an anti-inflammatory frequency at a very, very small like signaling frequency. So I think even really, really sensitive people, that's one of the reasons too that I think these are more are better for electrosensitive people where some of Dr. Tennant's stuff, some of the TENS units basically, I think his, his magnetic device, inductive device is really good, but when you're putting st things on the body and you're kind of putting the voltage right in directly, some people didn't sleep well or would get jittery. Uh -huh. uh, and, then, and so I think this is a little easier. I think that the TENS, the, the microcurrent is even smaller. I think, I think that's gonna be pretty safe for electrosensitive folks. But you'll do 40 hertz and then direct it to something like nerve tissue or, you know, a joint or whatever, skin, whatever. I've had, I, I, I had nerve pain in my back. I had a nerve just go offline. I didn't even know. And it, and it's really come online. And it, my gut has been connected. Again, it's, this is all about inner body communication. What happens if you've got a pinched nerve or you've got a nerve? Uh, I think this is one of the risk factors for electrosensitivity too, is nerve damage, pinched nerve, mm. uh, car accidents. I've heard, I can't remember the exact document I read on that one. So bringing all your nerves back online so you don't have anyone like, it's like a wire that's flickering, you know, again, it's a, get that signal back online. So great, great results with um, frequency specific microcurrent. We've got a link to a book there. The other one that's a little bit wild, you know, we, we talked about um, cleaning the brain out and the, this fluid and there's been some breathing techniques that uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza has been doing, where you get your inner thequal, inner thequal pressure, I think that's how it's pronounced. Basically, like you, you're doing these techniques like I learned in the military to keep you from losing blood in your head, but you're not just pushing just blood up, you're pushing the cerebral spinal fluid up. Okay. So it's, it's a technique that I, I kind of naturally learned to do when I started meditating. I, my body kind of went there and I started l getting into a bliss state and I realized I was doing a certain breathing technique and I kind of naturally learned to do this. So if you really let go, you might get there. Um, but for people who can't do that, especially people who are immobilized or not exercising or they can't do yoga, there is a device called a Normatec. I don't know if you've heard of this. No, I'm not familiar it's, with it. It's kind of like a blood pressure pump. Here it is. And you can go, if you go to like a place that does cryotherapy, um, they will frequently have these things. So you look at Normatec, it, you turn it on and there are things that go on your legs. It's usually for athletes to recover. So there are things that go on your legs. Like if you've skied all day and you're, you know, you want to recover faster, you've been running, the ones that go on your arms. And there's one that goes on your hips, especially. So the one that goes on your hips squeezes your hips and your lower spine and really increases your inner thecal pressure. I think that's pronounced correctly. Um, and so I'm just getting into that, st that state where, where you're getting kind of, you're feeling the, not only the everything washing through, but apparently your pineal gland, which is the middle of one of the ventricles, when it feels this kind of fluid coming through that it, you kind of feel like you're in a little bit of a bliss state, your, your head feels good. So it's giving you feedback that keep doing what you're doing, whether it's your breath cycle or your exercise or whatever you're doing. 
So I've been, I thought that's great, especially for like, I've got my dad's older and he's not going to be out exercising. I think this is great for folks who, you know, maybe an autistic kid or a dad or an electrosensitive person who's lost exercise tolerance and can't exercise anymore, mm-hmm. which I was definitely in that phase. And I'm back to even running now at this point. So, um, so I think that's really useful. The bad news is, so this is, it's got a, this is a new, the version three, this one, you can't turn the Bluetooth off. So the older versions you can, but they're more expensive. So I just got some shielding material and covered it. Okay. But you know, so I, I'll, I put the link for the shielding material on there too, if people want to play with that. Um, and then finally, like I was also talking about like cryotherapy. So one of my go-tos, I, I remember going to a, um, a, uh, a meeting with a friend, really bad, dirty electricity environment. And I came out and my ears were totally red and I felt hot and, you know, whatever. And so I drove right home and right past this place I was doing cryo, went in, did a cryotherapy, my ears color changed and I was back in the game. And mm. normally I've been wiped out for a couple hours, if not, like I used to be maybe back in 2000. 12, I would be wiped out for days if I got a bad EMF exposure. Wow. So I'm giving you all my best stuff that I've, I guess it's been 15 years of playing with this stuff. So, um, so the cryotherapy has been fabulous. And, and if you do a couple, it was originally done for inflammation, especially joint inflammation. You usually do about like, th- I think maybe it's like three sessions pretty rapidly. And then maybe once a week and just a kind of a maintenance thing, but you can kind of catch up and be in the game, especially after you've wiped out. And like some people might be, if you're really in fight or flight mode, you might, you might, it might be too much for your nervous system or your vagal tone to kind of do the cold therapy, but you could do like a cold shower or something like that as well. Yeah. So see what you can lean into. Um, and then live O2 therapy or live O2 therapy. Have you heard of that at all? Yeah. Uh, is it, um, it's adaptive it, oxygen. Okay. No, no. I, I was thinking hyperbaric chamber. That's it's similar. It's similar. It's similar to that. Okay. It's not under pressure, although I have find okay. doctors doing ad- what he's called adaptive oxygen under pressure. So hyperbaric is a good solution too. Um, I've done both. Um, tr- either one will work. Yeah, hyperbaric works, but I like I like LIVO. LIVO two is the one I've done the most. I think it's easier in some sense because you don't you're not in this chamber for an hour or whatever. You can do it while you exercise. I usually do it on a recumbent bike. I usually do it on a Vasper machine, which is fabulous. If that's another fun toy, but um, it's basically you get 100% oxygen. And then you flip the switch, and it it makes you feel like you're up at 7,500 feet. So you've gone mm. from 100% oxygen, oxygen rich environment, and then your body's like, oh my God, I'm on the top of a mountain, and you vasodilate, and everything opens up. And then you flip the switch back, and then all this 100% oxygen goes back into the deeper into the body. So I'll play around with that. Sometimes even doing a niacin flush before it, and so I had an exposure. Um, at a cell tower at, uh, at Pebble Beach golf course that kind of wiped me out for a couple of weeks. And I kind of was not, my memory wasn't great. I was just a little bit off. And then I did this again and I was like back in the game instantly. So that is my go-to recovery if, if I'm getting a little spacey or whatever after an exposure. Um, yeah, I think it's just fabulous for opening up microcirculation, which, you know, can get shut down from EMF exposure. Um, the other one that's interesting too, this is... Um, this is that study at Berkeley um, on resilience when it was looking at um, glial cells and turns out that the glial cells are driven by f- gamma waves, gamma brain waves, which are about 40 hertz. So there's a product I've known about for a while called the Vilite, which, you know, they had this thing go up your nose and all over your head, about $2,000 yeah. red light therapy or infrared therapy. Um, and it was like a oh, massive braking system <laughs> for your, if you were kind of feeling a little bit amped up, this was like, <laughs> um, but it looks a little odd and it's a little expensive. This is pretty cheap. There's even a light bulb version of it that gives you a 40 Hertz exposure. You run it for like an hour a day in your peripheral. I think really good idea. Maybe while you're watching television, if, so you don't get, you get, don't get entrained by the flicker rate of that. And you get kind of, this is in the periphery or maybe while you're doing the computer, just a little bit. So I've been playing with this a little bit. Um, and kind of interesting. I think really good for maybe like uh, put it on a timer though. It's not supposed to be on all the time and read the instructions. So that's kind of interesting. And then of course antioxidants. I know a lot of people are playing around with antioxidants for recovery. Um, I've linked a paper here on antioxidants, but the one that worked most for me, I think turmeric has worked really well. So I'd have a bad EMF exposure, a little turmeric, a little bit of water, drink that, and I'd be back in the game almost instantly. Mm. Um, Dr. Klinghart was really big on rosemary. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a great antioxidant. I've done really well with rosemary. Um, anything that had rosemary in it really worked well for me. He's got a product at Kai Sciences called Ray Wave that has worked really well. So I've got a link to that. And then um, flushing niacin, just if your body is gets amped up. Like, when I get a lot of exposure, sometimes my body goes a little bit fast. And, uh, you know, I get too amped up to sleep or whatever, or, you know. And so the flushing niacin is great because it, you know, it gets your circulation back, helps you with your circulation. It's a precursor to NAD, so it's going to help you with, give you the power to, to, to fix the DNA. And it helps you calm over methylation. And just if your body starts getting over methylated, which I think the EMF can do. So it's been an incredible resource for me. So, and that's been a real go-to for me, especially for sleep and getting kind of dialed in. And so also those, it's very cheap, right? It, it's it, very it cheap. It costs next to nothing as a supplement. Exactly. And Mercola's been saying too, and it's not, Mercola's been talking about uh, niacinamide as he says, you know, you can do these expensive NAD IVs, but no one's, you know, promoting the niacinamide as a precursor. And he thinks that might be one of the best ways to rebuild NAD. So you can try to tr- track that down as well. But um, but it doesn't have that flushing. It doesn't have that immediate calming effect that I think the flushing does. And of course, the bad news is, you know, you might have this incredible red flush. So don't do it before a <laughs> podcast or a Zoom thing, which I almost did today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, all right. I did that before interviews uh, in, in my day yeah. at the beginning of this work. And yeah. I, I, I did not recall, you know, I have my, my pills organized for the day and my supplement box and I, yeah. I take it and then I go into an interview and I feel the flush coming on and I'm like, I hope they don't notice. And I look at the interview, I'm in <laughs> bed and they're like, Lobster. Are you, <laughs> yeah, are you feeling yeah. good, Nick? Like, is yeah. that, a, is that a, a, like a heat stroke or something? Yeah, yeah. it was, uh, it was so funny. Yeah. One of my little lanterns just ran out. I've been loving this little lantern. It's kind of a low flicker light from Tala. So it's a battery powered thing and the no flicker rate so it's been a nice little lantern when i turn things off at night but it just ran out of it yeah it looks it looks fabulous it's a um uh goop thing i think goop kind of came up with the design and worked with them but um but the battery just ran out (laughs) it was been my secondary lighting all right so i'll give you and then i'll give you eight of these what i call like protective solutions and then we can kind of free form okay yeah so one of the things I've been loving the most is these, I should have just brought one up, is these the dirty electricity filters from Noxtac. So they're good, balanced, dirty electricity filters. They're not strictly capacitor-based, so they don't just, you know, um, imbalance your power factor. Um, so they work great as dirty electricity filters, and but they also create a, um, uh, they also have this, general concept they call spin organization. The guy who did it's a conventional, he's a physicist, trained as a physicist. And his approach is that EMF is chaotic and it's also polarized wave. So natural yeah. EMF is more like um, diffuse light, like the kind of this environment is fairly diffuse. But um, polarized light is more like glare coming off a building or coming off a flat water surface. It kind of hits you sharply and Biologically, that's what's kind of active with the channel, the different calcium channels. Uh-huh. And cell membranes are like, what's this? This doesn't feel safe. So uh, he's got different technology that's kind of acting as a diffuser. So it can not only um, can fix the dirty electricity, but kind of softens the field effects a little bit and diffuses those. So they hit your body, feels a little bit safer. And if you have wireless in the environment, it's not going to fix it. If you've got Wi-Fi, you know, if you're at a hotel and you've got Wi-Fi and you can't touch that, it is creating a little bit of a softened diffuse. So that it's almost like the signal to noise ratio, the kind of what's organized and natural versus what's chaotic is a little bit better. Okay. So I've been really enjoying those. I, I bring those when I travel. Um, so that's kind of the spin organization. And they also have another one that... Um, you can bring it like if you're in a car or a lot. Of, he's been using this with a lot of electrosensitive people. Uh, you can put it on a dirty on a uh, inverter if you've got solar or whatever. So this is a spiro disc. This is the ultra version. There's a pro version and there's even smaller end versions. So I've got links to these as well. There's some one of my electrosensitive friends who you know couldn't used to not be able to walk next to a Tesla and her daughter works at Tesla. With this in it, she can drive it. Okay. So wow. I'm like, okay, well, I, dr- I drive a test. I still drive a test. I'm playing around with, I, I do nutty stuff. So I still play with electric cars and everything, and I try to make them as safe as possible. So um, I've been enjoying this disc. It's kind of interesting. Um, so that's been great, uh, especially, I guess he's getting some people 
just carrying this around with them in a purse or backpack, it's kind of helping them in the whole room and putting it next to them at night. Like if you've got a, a Wi-Fi coming in this direction, you put it like on the wall or on the windowsill over there and it kind of diffuses and creates a little bit of more order and organization and it's, it's helping me sleep better. Uh, and, he's, and he's cool because he's got some pretty good science behind it. He's got a good way of testing it and he goes to very conventional. So he goes to... Um, uh, telecom conferences and everything and he can has good conversations with people and he is very credible so i would be comfortable you know you know talking about this technology with like government employees who've got havana syndrome or whatever so i mean the other one that i love is is dr mercola's sleep tent which is fabulous for travel yes, yes. so um i don't know if he's got a 20 percent off discount going on right now but um that has really saved my life in so many situations. I went to a you know a wedding last year in a 5G environment and slept great in that tent. Honestly, once in a while, I'll bring it out. If I'm not sleeping great, uh, I'll just bring it out and just sleep in it for a night or two. And you just kind of, just sometimes you just forget how, how good your sleep can be when you're really well shielded and grounded. That's the other great thing about the tent is it's grounded. Um, speaking of grounds and signal to noise ratio, there's an audio guy named Alan Marr who has worked on audio for decades, and you, we, we've talked about him before. Uh -huh. And this is another way of lowering signal-to-noise ratio. So he's got all these devices that plug in and reduce the noise throughout your whole house. You could have these big grounds that plug in and these other devices that absorb EMF and that emit kind of more you know healthy resonant protocols. But this is a pocket ground, and I've got a link to his more current version. So he's got this bigger and he's got smaller ones uh, these are great for kids in school like putting them in a backpack or anybody if you're you have to go to a 5g you know environment and you just really this will give you more capacity there's a ton of basically a lot of carbon in here and he's doing a lot of things to absorb and dissipate noise so it's, it's almost like having more a larger body size more surface area and i just find like i have a longer fuse when i have this in my pocket i'll just go in and i'm, I'm going to be good in a in an intense environment i'm just going to feel better in this so actually just holding this now i'm like wow i'm going to put that in my other pocket right now all right so yeah. um and then i played around with to the the shielded it's sometimes the shielded clothing thing is a little bit controversial for people some people think that's you know making it worse you know i've done okay with the the fonz ones that have um it's shielded it's f-o-n-z it's shielded but there's the shielding material isn't touching your skin um because you just don't want that you kind of want i think honestly a great combination is the fonz and anytime you've got you're doing shielding you need to have some way of dissipating that noise and you need to be grounded and so if you're in you know a conference someplace where you've got a lot of wi-fi you could do or on an air let's say on an airplane you can have the the that shirt on or underwear or hat or whatever you want to do and then some of like the alan mar grounding and then this with you on the airplane is a fabulous combination hmm. um even uh the the dirty electricity plugs a lot of these airplanes now you've got a plug you can plug that in as well so that you can get rid of the so if you're on an airplane you could do that dirty electricity filter you could do this you could do um a host of things and actually here's actually here's another one well um and, and of course, well, here's one more. I'll, I'll just switch the order a little bit. I love this. This is a, a Philip Stein sleep band. And we've talked about signal to noise ratio a little bit. And what this does, I don't know if you, I mean, you've talked probably, you know what the Schumann resonance is, correct? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, so that's kind of. Maybe explain it for people that for everybody. maybe don't know the term. Yeah. It's a, it's kind of, it's basically the. The frequency between the ionosphere and the earth, it's this resonant frequency in that cavity. You could just think of it as like the heartbeat of the earth. And it's not just one frequency. It's a, a harmonic set of frequencies. Mm -hmm. The bass is about 7.83 hertz, and it varies a little bit. It's based kind of on lightning strikes. Uh, it turns out that our brain waves are basically in the harmonics of the Schumann resonance. So you could think of it as like that's a, a supporting factor that helps us kind of... Um, that it just, it kind of gives us support. You know, it's just like when people do this uh, heart rate coherence work with horses or riding an elephant or something, it just gives you a little bit more connection. So this is, and I know some people have used these uh, Schumann resonator generators, just generating just that pure signal. The problem is like, is that signal in, in, in phase with the earth right now, or is it out of phase? It could be 180 degree and canceling it, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanna really be in phase with the earth. I've loved this. I found that at a spa at the Four Seasons in Maui. Um, 
it's basically like the sleep band you put on. They have daytime ones and whatever as well. So you just put it on at night. And they have some simple studies showing that it improves your melatonin, your endogenous melatonin at night, which is, so it's kind of almost like taking melatonin or helping you preserve, you know, this is part of the equation. And I think, you know, somehow, I don't know if the body, how this works with the, well, it might be working with the gamma brain waves and the detox or the pine. I'm not sure how that exactly works, but it works for me. And I've given it to, I don't know how many people, countless people, and I've gotten great feedback from everybody. And I, and if I, don't sleep with it. I, if I forget, which I rarely do now at this point, um, I, I wake up in the morning and I'm just like, oh, I did not have as good a sleep as I could have. Mm. So is this it an active band or passive? In nothing active. It's completely passive. It's, okay. There's no batteries. There's no whatever. So I really like that. Matter of fact, I've even played around with stuff. There was a cheaper version, and I would take that off, and um, I would even play around putting it on my um, power box on different circuits to get the Schumann resonance in the... <laughs> In the how I'm just playing around, so um, you know, again, you got to have a meter. I like the Safe and Sound, to, the Safe and Sound Pro Two. It's been my favorite meter. I know there's a new. We've got a new meter out. Um, the Shielded Healing folks have got it. It's got. And I find that so it does. It's a 5G meter for less than a thousand bucks. I kind of been using it around. I mean, it does. It works. It's less than a thousand dollars. I just find that it's not terribly needed. That um, I found a. I found a. Uh, a signal above in the 24 hertz in my Tesla. That that was some new information. But I found basically that this Safe and Sound Pro would give you the areas that you need to stay away from. It's enough yeah. because again, the, it's not just 5G. There are also 4G sites and 3G and whatever. So Correct. you're fine with that meter or the, even the cheaper ones. I know you've got a couple that you recommend. So I think those are fine now. And I, you got to have a meter. It'll really save you. Um, what else? The final one. This is this is the most off the board one. Um, I've been following this for about 10 years. It's, a, it's called um, biogeometry. Have you heard of this yet? Yes, for sure. I interviewed the, the inventor, Dr. Ibrahim Karim. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. So I met him about, I don't know, 10 years ago at this point. And I've been doing this for about 10. This has been one of my go-tos. It's been one of the ones that I was kind of like, God, I don't want to really, if I, I don't know if I want to tell people about this. It's a little whatever. But yeah. I like his, his latest book. It just came out at the very last day of 2022. And... Um, He's kind of combining not only the old, the older, the old stuff from you know hundreds of years, thousands of years ago, um, but he's kind of combining in some of the new modern physics stuff with torsion fields, and um, and talking about entropy. And I really like the way he's talking about entropy and time and shapes and getting into the resonance of the body. And so I've really had to, and some of the, the new things that he's introduced uh, are really working for me. Um, with some of his some of the life force stuff and some of the way he's creating more kind of um, enhancing and balancing a lot of these torsion fields that are naturally in nature, and talking about how the EMF is just disrupting those uh, these kind of toroidal things that are going on that are interacting with our mitochondria and so many different things. Uh, and I, I just think I'd love to see people at like Dolby. It's just really about the quality of subjective experience and how people feel and how to, to enhance that. And um, I'd love to see people at like Dolby and in Hollywood and audio places really working more with them to um, to enhance you know sound, audio. And of course, I'd love to see the, the wireless telecom industry starting to use their stuff to get their, their, um, their work to be more in harmony with nature. I think he's got a paradigm in there that really yeah. kind of lays out how to you know it's kind of like like what's the difference between music and noise you know we all kind of know but you know where's the formula well he's starting to get in some of the formula and a lot of it's you know numbers angles colors shapes um here's some of it this is a this is one of one of the devices he has for brain balance brain hemisphere balancing so um which i think we all can use right now so he's got some simple things but you don't even need to get in even just using like the, the number 16 for electrical systems i've um you could put up marking with 60 not not one six but like 16 hashes and then the number nine separately uh can ba help balance your power that's not the that's the first level of balancing for things that are electrical or wireless uh, and then, you know, please buy his book and read more. Go to the training even better or have a practitioner come out. Um, yeah, so those are kind of like those. So that's basically like conceptually and and those are kind of my top recovery things and my top 
kind of solutions. Um, that, that's kind of my best stuff. And we crammed it in there. And I think we still have a little bit of time to either answer questions about that or freeform or do whatever. Uh, Sorry sure. if that's too, too much, but I hope no, I just, I know there's, there's so much. Okay. There's so much need right now. And yeah. I have a, a real, I, I really appreciate you, you know, having this great audience and sticking with this for so long. And, you know, I've been doing all this, looking at all these solutions, but I haven't been doing, I, especially in the last couple of years, have not been doing as much distribution. I've been kind of, kind of focusing on solutions and funding and, strategizing behind the scenes so i really appreciate the um the the, the microphone here sure well I, I know that a lot of people are gonna be happy about this i think that cer certain solutions you talked about are, are very very inexpensive uh, turmeric for example you could find organic turmeric anywhere for a few dollars or the magnets for example i think these are brilliant ideas especially just commenting on the magnets because i um, I, I, I did not when you talked about it originally, but the PMF devices work for some people that are electrosensitive. For some people, it's too much. But Dr. Pollock, who was one of the world's authority on PEMF, started this career around this alternative, let's say, frontier science topic with magnets originally. And then he got into PMF, but he saw great results and looked at the medical science on magnets, especially published in other languages, and it was tremendous. So he was very impressed with it. He had a lot of um, Russian literature tra uh, translated for himself to learn around the use of uh, magnet in uh, Eastern Europe and Russia. Um, so yeah, it's just to be noted uh, that if you cannot afford the most expensive devices out there, the P, you see the PMF mats and get this mm -hmm. courage. Oh my God, this is $10,000. Yeah. Well, maybe a $20 set of magnet could give you uh, a large fraction of the benefits and, and, and anyone mm -hmm. can afford that. So it, it's, it's nice that you have a lot of different solutions in there. And you said you have a document, so we're gonna include that along with the video exactly. or in the show notes uh, with sure. all the links. So if people were scrambling, taking notes, don't worry about yeah, it, don't, I'm gonna have yeah. everything. Okay. Exactly. Uh, I, there's a, still one major area of controversy for me is the marketing around devices that can optimize the environment of all kinds. You have Schumann resonance uh, devices, you have crystals uh, that you know might, I don't know, support the human biofield. You have technologies that will uh, claim to um, unpolarize the signal or modify signal characteristics of the electropollution and say, well, you know, it's not measurable except subjectively with how people feel um, when exposed to electropollution or maybe uh, measurable changes in their biology, which is va a valid way to assess it. The problem I have with it, and it's been my... <laughs> on top of my mind since the beginning of this work in 2016 is how come these companies are so confident in saying that their devices are a hundred percent protective and this is really yeah you can't I really do that. that yeah no you can't really yeah you can't really say you shouldn't say a hundred percent protective yeah that's, um, that's a little bit nutty and i actually remember driving flying back from dc at one point and i said what's required to really prove that EMF is completely safe. And I started writing down, well, you have to show that it doesn't affect, it doesn't damage DNA. It doesn't damage sperm. It doesn't damage, it doesn't impact heart rate variability. It doesn't impact brain waves, right? Um, it doesn't impact the autonomic nervous system. It doesn't put uh, cells into cell danger mode. Um, yeah, you don't want your gut flora going into cell danger mode, which is cell danger mode is the equivalent of fight or flight mode at a cellular level. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Dr. Navio's work. You don't want um, your, your gut flora going into cell danger mode and um, releasing you know, toxins or whatever. That's another product that's been interesting is the Presidium is an interesting yep. supplement. Um, but a, a little bit expensive for a lot of people, but I think it yeah. you know, might be worth trying if you want to get into it. Um, let's see. So yeah, no, it's, it's quite... Um, what we really need to do is we need to have an extensive um, way of testing that um, we need to have all these different ways of checking, you know, uh, oxid oxidative stress, inflammation, right? Um, we have to have this long list of things that need to be tested. And then, of course, cancer. And that's like testing for cancer is like, you know, whatever. That's 
The tricky thing is, I think that's the tricky thing, is that the cancer thing is almost like a merchant of doubt. They want to play to that because it's so vague and so long-term. They're just <laughs> yeah. trying to stall. Yeah. So you really want to focus on the other. Oh, the other one is immediate blood clumping. So I know a lot of people have done live blood analysis, and they've and they've showed like this helps prevent blood clumping. And I, I've talked to different doctors about that. I some a doctor at Harvard I work with was said, you know. Yeah, but it's a lot of people would dismiss the protocols. It's very hard to do because you can really screw up the test thing. You can get oxidized, and there's all kinds of ways of screwing up. But all the different, I'll just say from my perspective, all the products that, that have showed, that have demonstrated that they do well with live blood analysis or help improve live blood analysis, I've tried them, and they've made me feel better subjectively. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's one that's interesting. Um, the other one that's interesting, I don't know if you play with the BioWell the Sputnik, uh, so BioWell is a technology mm. from Russia. Um, I think this is kind of interesting. It's it's a little, you know, it's not super conventional, but I think if you're talking about entropy and physics, straight biophysics, they have a little device. Uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza is using it at his events, and he's putting it in the environment, and he's seeing people meditate, and it's changing. But, you know, really, he should be ch ch turning the Wi-Fi off and seeing if it changes. <laughs> yeah. But... So it's a little device that's got spikes on and it's measuring kind of ionics. I don't know exactly how that it's it's basically creating kind of like I think it's basically creating like a little plasma or electric field effect. And then it's measuring the effect of that field in the environment. And it's almost like like almost like a wind test or like a little wind sock or a something that would like, you know, like something's if, if a, a electromagnetic field's blowing on it this direction, it's going to distort in a little bit of way. So it creates like a uniform field. And then if there's some sort of impact on it and there's a distortion and, and that that is basically trying to act as a heuristic for your own biofield, which there's a lot of research on the magnetic and electric biofields. You know, obviously your brain and your heart are electrical, but some of that extends outside your body. Um, so I think that's interesting. I'm certainly um, brain waves, uh, heart rate variability. Um, for me, for me, one of my tells and anything that measures autonomic nervous system, I think would be interesting too. Parasympathetic activity. My my real benefit. I told you about my ears getting red. That was a negative effect. When I'm in a safe environment, my um, there's some sort of like uh, like a like a wax like a secretion, and my fingers will get kind of slip like not slippery, but just kind of. Waxy, can you hear that? No, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> you can't hear this. Like a okay. little bit of, yeah, I don't know if people, some electrosensitive people might have had this experience. I remember, okay. I remember taking fish, fish oil once, and some reason my body was like, oh, my God, I'm back. Whatever. I took the supplement and helped. But in, sometimes I'll go into an environment where my body just feels safe, and I'll, um, I'll get my sinuses will pop open, and then I'll feel kind of like, uh, my body will start secreting like an oil or a mm. waxy substance, whatever. So those are my tells for, I'm basically using my body as a, as a test pilot. So right now we're using human beings as test pilots and we're, the, we're taking the most sensitive people and we're using, we're, we're vetting the technology for the larger populations. So um, that's where we are now. Hopefully in the future, we'll have something that will put in, let's say a baby's crib and say, Here's a safe environment that affect that it looks at air ionics and EMF and light flicker and all these kind of things. And um, you know, Doctor, you know, Doctor Kareem has got some stuff, but I think you know, I'm not sure that's going to be credible for the majority of people. But we'll figure out. Um, I I don't know right now. So I think you know. Heart rate variables, heart rate variability is really credible. Inflammatory markers, oxidative stress. There's another one called the bio, uh, was it the bioelectronics of Vincent that is comes from France, doctor in France that NASA was using, and it's a measurement of pH in the body, pH, oxidative stress, and I think lactic acid levels. And the body's supposed to be in a certain range, and these are all factors that affect the elect the electrical impact of the body. And uh, I love the paper on that. I thought it was really quite interesting. And I love that NASA was using it. Um, that's just looking at like the electrical infrastructure of the body. And then the magnets are going to help fix the pH, which is cool. So that's going to get one of the factors in. And lactic acid's kind of interesting. If like you see, some people do really well when I've been in really bad situations. I could do um, sauerkraut, eat things like sauerkraut or things that are high in lactic acid. 
And there's this thing called like the lactic acid shuttle or lactic acid hypothesis that your body uses the lactic acid from exercise or from food as a way of, um, I can't remember it's feeding the mitochondria or whatever, but try like, you know, cold, not cold slaw, but um, yeah, like sauerkraut. slaws and sauerkraut, exact sauerkraut. So if you're really sensitive, try sauerkraut. That might kind of bring your brain back a little bit. Interesting. So good, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I think that you're, you're, you're someone who understands complex systems, um, that sure you're probably way more than I do, but I understand that you know, the, the human biology is extremely complex. Uh, we understand some parts good, other parts not so much. We've just discovered last year that certain parts of our microbiome uses 3.5 gigahertz to talk to each other. So that was a, uh, as much as a, something shocking for me and not shocking. I'm like, oh, well, for sure, there are other interactions that we did not envision and there will continue to be so in the future. So this is really why I think that simplistic thinking around certain devices is um, could be harmful mm -hmm. to people. Uh, and, right. and for sure it is, I think just a continuation of the human psyche wanting a magic bullet. Uh, and I understand a lot of people have been following me. Okay, Nick, what do you do you recommend? Is it biogeometry? Is it um, Aries Tech or WaveGuard? There's so many other companies out there. And they probably each have their benefits. Some devices out there seem like they're either pure scams or don't seem to do anything and the testing uh, not so much but uh, a lot of credible brands i've seen there, there are a lot of things that are pretty 30, credible yeah 30 different products out there that have different means of functioning the problem i have personally as someone who recommends products and even who makes a living sometimes uh recommending product and getting a cut as an affiliate and well i don't know which one works and if their marketing says 100 percent protective then i cannot stand behind it and most of these right. companies use these types of language and i come from an uh, advertising background so i know i know that it's tempting to do so right. and that it sells to say that but if people for for some of these devices the marketing really makes it uh, sound like okay you have this machine you place it in your in the middle of your home and now you can have Wi-Fi you can talk on the phone all day and you are safe and we don't know that exactly so I think it's just I guess the wrong messaging I would say we're just yeah I wouldn't say you I wouldn't say safe I would just say we're mitigating risk or you're or, um, reducing you're trying to reduce harm you're reducing harm yeah you're and you are reduce, you just say you're are, reducing but... harm and yeah exactly it's, and yeah, I, it's I tricky yeah and i would even even just say with the things i recommend like this is this is the best i've got now and i might change my mind next year i probably will change my mind next year but this is i don't want to not recommend something i don't want to have all the stuff that i'm using that's helping me and then not share it um so i can't make a perfect claim but i'm just saying you know, this is like a menu of choices. If they work for you, great. Uh, if they don't, give me give me feedback or tell me what is working for you. Um, yeah, I think another area for testing that's interesting is kind of biophotonics. Mm -hmm. and are you familiar with biophotonics? Uh, is it uh, like the JDV camera? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's a camera, but the biophotonics was discovered by Fritz Pop like in the 30s, and there's still a lab going on right now. But it's basically that that bot that um, cells are using different forms of like, I think it's UV and uh, infrared light to communicate biologically, just like we were, okay. just like you talked about. And so, um, and that can be very conventionally measured. So I think that's interesting. I think um, what it gets, it just, for some reason it hasn't caught on and I can get into that later, but it, I think biophotonics and, and light are really interesting for measurement and it might be a nice instant measurement. Um, there's a woman who, um, who got a MacArthur Genius Award for measuring chemicals. And she took a bio, um, photo sensitive a plankton that glows, basically. And, you know, we don't have tests for all these chemicals right now. You can't even test these. So what she was brilliant. She said she just took drops of this water and dropped them and dropped them in with the, bio, the fluorescent light and noticed that that when it was really toxic, the light levels would go down. And that's how she was measuring a gross measurement of toxicity. Well, 
that would be a phenomenally interesting measurement for EMF as a, as mm. a high level quick heuristic because we need something that not only works for us and protects biology, but we need something that's really fast for industry. We need a new standard that industry can come in and it's, it's, it's something more intelligent than SAM, yeah. um, which is just nutty. It's like a grade school science project. I think there's some grade school science projects that are smarter than that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think hundred so, percent. And one thing that I'll mention uh, just in, in, in passing, because I've been uh, connecting with these two scientists, Dr. Gaetan Chevalier from uh, the Earthing Institute. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it. He's in California. He, uh, he's also the director of the SciTech Labs. Uh, mm -hmm. P-S-Y-T-E-K. SciTech is a lab specialized in testing subtle energy devices or phenomenon like energy healing, meditation, and trying mm -hmm. to quantify it. Uh, they use the JDV camera. J JDV is basically sure. um, um, something where you have the biophotonic emissions from your fingers. Exactly. That's the uh, bio well and the Sputnik that I was talking yeah, about. Exactly. The old, yeah, the old, name is, the old name is GDV. I have the old Russian version. The okay. newer name is like bio well. And then the Sputnik is the attachment that does the okay, environment. Exactly. I think that's I think that's interesting. I've got a friend in uh, in Palo Alto that is kind of leading a lot of the funding in that area of subtle energy measurement, and there is a lot of overlap in our two yeah. fields. And he's told me about that five years ago. So he goes, he like, you're, he goes, I'm trying to measure the positive effects of so and so. You're trying to measure the negative effects. I'm like, yes, let's you know. So we're we are collaborating. Um, and there's some interesting stuff around, actually interesting paper that he shared with me last year around the coherence of EMF. Like there's some EMF that's healing and positive, mm -hmm. right? And so there was a paper on uh, that it's that's really about the coherence of the signal, not the strength or whatever. And so these come up with different coherent bands that are like good or bad or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, they come up with different bands that are good and different bands that are bad. Uh, and, and they're bad for life. And then they're starting to come out with different protocols and recommend how to redo the signals so they are more coherent and don't impact life. And they're using wow. some really intense physics uh, that are like is way beyond me. So I could send you those two papers as well. I that'd, think those be, guys are that'd be interesting. Uh, so far, I, I saw one paper. I think it might, be, might have been from Poland, uh, but maybe you shared it with me. I don't know. It was really about the someone kind of, writing a first paper or trying to come up with the idea of the field of uh, basically electromagnetic biocompatibility. There are certain engineers or, you know, physicists that have been putting this forward, but just a handful of people, because you're going to know about the problem first and then realize, okay, well, okay, w how could we create the same standards that we have to prevent machines from talking with each other or interfering with each other, which is electronic right. compatibility or, or, you know, wireless compatibility, which is very, very important. You don't want a, a cell phone interfering with exactly. uh, airplanes, yeah. uh, instruments, for example. And that's been a big, a whole controversy with 5G, right? With the rollout, yeah, but. Exactly. So the, the real premise and that, that this is someone from the industry that I've been working with is he sees all life forms as antenna. He says right now, you know, when you buy a license from the FCC and a buy a bandwidth, you are you have this thing and you cannot be interfered with. And he's thinking, well, that those rights need to belong to people and trees and plants and whatever. So you look at a tree as an antenna, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's an old book I read called like the Human Antenna or whatever, and it's all talking about all the resonance with the body and so forth. Um, so I think what we need to do is almost just like we had. Um, uh, we protect natural parks and so forth. We need to protect these certain bandwidths that life is using. And, you know, almost like a national park thing. This is just protect, this is protecting life. Like how you, you just can't have a sustainable business that's impacting communication with life. So, um, and I think that, I think that might be actually one of the best that we talked originally about inner body communication. So if there's something around some measurement around in inner body communication around, um, and I think maybe coherence or whatever, if there's ways of measuring that. It's, and mostly the Russians were way ahead of us on this. So a lot of the Russian tech is, is doing that. Um, even, even Dr. Tennant's played around with phase angle, which is like your capacity to hold charge. Uh -huh. yep. So 
Um, I, I honestly just have always thought of like, you should think about the body like it's a computer and it's the same thing, signal to noise ratio. So it's like, how do you ground it better? How do you get rid of interference? How do you measure the interference? And what are the key things you want to not interfere with? And we really have to be careful with not just electrical, but with light. Like your body is so much more sensitive to light. Like we really underestimate all invisible stuff and, and light. I, I think of, of, of wireless as light outside of frequency we can see. And we mm -hmm. have light sensitive organs. The pineal gland is with our circadian rhythms and melatonin production. And it's kind of the master endocrine gland. And, you know, your endocrine function is one of the key areas that we, that chemical focus in people in environmental health focus on is endocrine disruption. Um, that's actually one of the areas I didn't talk. I had low thyroid levels, not because my thyroid was working, was bad, but because the signaling from my pituitary to the thyroid was offline. And it's coming back now which is fantastic because I'm figuring that all out. I don't know how I'm figuring it all out, but it's, it's I'm more light <laughs> exposure. I'm actually, I'm going out and getting natural light in the mornings more. Yeah. And, you know, so that's been really helpful. And then trying a little bit of pineal gland and pituitary gland, endocrine gland health. How are we doing on time? We're, we're a little bit over. I don't want to, you know, tell yeah, me what to I do. Yeah, I want to be respectful of your time too. And oh, I'm, not I'm, overwhelm people too much. It, this is a lot of info, but I think... You know, I think this is this is also a hopeful note to leave on saying that uh, actually, yeah, Peter and some people in the, in the telecoms are starting to think about how can we make the signal safer? Because in my mind, I, I've shared that for years. I, I don't believe that this stuff will go away. I think it will take a lot of time. And I think that if the telecoms, whether they're forced or it becomes a market advantage to do so, start uh, having healthier signals, I'd be I'd be up for it because I think it would be a yeah. step in the right direction. Uh, step one is just is just getting the power under control yeah. and lowering the power and then playing with signal to noise ratio, just like you talked about. They are usually just raise the power and they don't play with the noise. So uh, and the other solution that we didn't talk about is like eco Wi-Fi, which is the, that's a fantastic solution for home. If if you're still using Wi-Fi or you're yeah. your whatever is, it's. It basically, he's, and he's a fantastic guy. If you haven't interviewed him yet, he's, he's an interview. Matter of fact, I'd really like to get him to like write. He, we talked about, I talked to him a couple months ago. We want to write maybe a white paper. Someone might help fund him to get it, to do a white paper. Probably one for the home environment, one for more business schools. Hmm. But um, basically what we talked about is lowering the power level down to the minimum level. He's using an app called NetSpot, which can you can map out visually with a Mac or whatever you you can map out the signal strength and visually see where it is from your signal and their neighbors coming in. So that's been fantastic. So you lower the power level down so you get it to the point where it's, it's maybe it's, it's minimum in your office level, but it's not near your bedroom or whatever. And then maybe you're shutting it off at night or whatever. But then I think the main one too is the beaconing frequency, which is usually, um, it's usually uh, 10 to 10 to 12 hertz. So it's 10 times 12 times a second. It's saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Well, what he does, one of his main techniques to lower the exposure by 90% is he lowers it down to one hertz. Now, after reading this book, and I'm kind of thinking one of the interesting things is to use the biogeometry of numbers and to lower it down. So, so on his device, he uses an ASIC router, an ASUS router. You yep. can buy just a straight ASUS router and then he, you can put his firmware on it, right? So, but you can buy just a straight ASUS router and lower the, the beaconing frequency down. He recommended 100. Well, I, I just set it to, to 99, which is a biogeometry frequency for the time pulse of the heart. And so this is, again, trying to get in sync with nature's level of timing. And I had a great impact just doing that. So mm -hmm. I think if you use the biogeometry of number and just timing, it's about getting in sync with nature. And that's one of the elements that he brought in his new book is adding in the time element of biogeometry, not just this, not just spatial. So um, I think that's really interesting using like harmonics that, that work with from biogeometry in the different numbers uh, and like the beaconing frequencies and timings so that biology, well, you know, I, I think I, my guess is right now, if you did, if you did 99, for the beaconing frequency, it would it would have less impact on heart rate variability than if it's, you know, 10 times a second or whatever. But I bet that there are some harmonics that will be more disruptive than other. And unfortunately, a lot of those harmonics are 
known in the classified military world when they've been trying to use this as a weaponize these things. Hmm. They learned they learned what was harmful and then they just kind of have hidden it and now well how do you keep industry people from using those frequencies? Yeah. You can't and really yeah. They're it's just opening new bands and new bands and new bands and now the terahertz and six G and I see a, yeah. a lot of future developments and opening more and more bands that yeah might be harmful likely are so we need to restrict this stuff and it's gonna yeah at, at the moment it wouldn't be uh, something very popular among the telecoms they're just looking for more and more and more bands but i think part of it is just the, how the technology is built it's uh maximum exposure all the time open all the time so if if they were more intelligent about right. it because the resources would would be more scarce in the industry they they would they would probably be just fine with it and still have their profits and be happy so yeah i well, i think that's one of the things is to try to make the wi-fi beaconing frequency and wi-fi itself be more on demand and go to sleep when it's not yep. used yeah. naturally so his if you buy his firmware if you get an asus router and you buy his firmware and you're in a household environment, you can configure the Wi-Fi to work with these known elements that are there. And then when those elements are off, it will automatically shut down. Yeah. Now, I would say it's it's a little complex to do. You might be able to do it. I'm technical, and I still think it's a little bit of a pain, and I, I've got everything okay. wired anyway. But um, – I had it working at my son's apartment for a while, and you know I think it's worth it's worth playing with. It's like a hundred bucks to play with the firmware if you want to do it. Um, but I think that's the question is how do we make that an industry standard? And and one of the ways to approach it is just from power saving alone. Yeah. Because yeah, Katie Katie Singer has been working on this factor. It's like you know this is a just the power usage of the internet is gigantic, and wireless is I think ten times less efficient than wired, or ten yeah, times exactly. yeah more power than using a wired connection. Yeah, energy and, that's and, just wasted. Yeah, and not and, and it's going not even in the right direction. Like it's going that way, and that, you know it's all <laughs> yeah. over the place. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Peter. It's been tremendous. Yeah. How can people find you, support you? Uh, if you, uh, I don't know if you accept donations through the Clearlight Ventures. Uh, oh, we don't anything need, you yeah, want to mention? We're fine. Okay. Um, uh, uh, you know, we don't need money. We're fine on that. I, we need, I actually need more f uh, funders would be nice. We're starting to do a small collaborative of EMF funders. Okay. So if you're a fairly serious funder that, you know, maybe 10000 a year or something like that, uh, you know, we're working with a small group of people to try to have, uh, to be a little smarter about how we fund in the area. Um, if people have any product ideas or any feedback about anything we talked about, they can send it to uh, info at clearlightventures.com. Uh, so yeah, the website is clearlightventures.com or clv.us, and uh, they can send an uh, email to the info, uh, the info link on that site. Okay, perfect. And you're looking to uh, to fund what, for example, EMF groups, studies. What exactly is this funding group focused on? Um, right now, right now, I'm primarily well. Everyone's got their own different approaches. There's kind of a system change theory. Some people are going after schools. Some people are yeah. going after wife. So we're all getting together and saying we're the. St some people are focusing on a legal approach. Some people are focusing. Really, it's kind of policy, uh, solutions, and awareness. Yeah. So you're you're working on awareness. Yeah. Uh, I've got some policy stuff going on in D.C. behind the scenes, and I'm happy with how that's going. Uh, and I'm trying to work behind the scenes on the solution side too. So we've got a multi prong approach. And I would just say for every person, you know, it's just so such a big thing. And we all, we just need a lot of help. Yeah. And, yeah, and I would say possible. also, I'll say too, if you're an activist, if you're, if you're a EHS person, don't stress about trying to be an activist. That's like the focus on your own health first. <laughs> that's if so anything, true. Oh my God. That's so true. Oh my God. You actually, it actually makes it worse when I've been really sick and I've tried it. It actually, when you're sick and you're in fight or flight mode, you, people just dismiss you more. So just focus on yourself, get grounded. The industry is almost fall, you know, flailing. It's hard for you to compete with the industry flailing, right? The industry is going to destroy itself faster than you can, as one little person, you know, push it over. So you don't even have to do anything. You just have to focus on yourself and your own health, and and to start, um, I don't know, leaning into the solutions to protect yourself for now. Yeah, and I think focusing on awareness rather than fighting against Goliath might be better for those people you know who personally suffer yeah. if if you can share your story you can if you can help yourself recover and share your story saying you know just like you're you're doing Peter because it's it's near and dear to you and even for me 
at the beginning, writing my book, I did have some symptoms around Wi-Fi, and I've been sharing about it a little bit as someone right. just a little bit sensitive. But, you know, it, it still impacted my life. I could barely work on Wi-Fi at one point because it was giving me too much brain fog. Nowadays, I, bear, uh, I very rarely do it anyway, but I share that because others might, uh, you know, might resonate. So, yeah, it's it's a great message. That's true. I never thought about it that way, but a lot of people write to me say I'm EHS and I'm doing I'm working 20 hours per day trying to solve the EMF problem. You probably no, don't have the not, bandwidth yeah. to do all of no. this, so take care of don't. yourself. Just take yeah. care of yourself. Actually, we learned awareness. The, the best thing I learned awareness-wise is that you could talk about it all day long and people won't do it. But we we did this tent. We ended up, ha I, what I really realized is that if you give someone a personal experience, a discerning experience, then they actually believe it. So we we, um, we had a shielding, shielded environment in California. Now we're using this tent. Um, and you can get a, a tent like this. Um, shielded Healing has a new 5G tent. I think it's like two or three grand. It's like a, they can go over a king size bed or whatever. I think you could use that sort of canopy or or take a Amazon, you know, Amazon event tent, 10 by 10, which is that's what we use as a frame. And then we put shielding material over it. That's a great experimental. That's a great way to give someone an experience of low Wi-Fi. So they have to turn their phones off before they go in. You should also ground the, the unit, the tent. And so what we would do is we just let people go in the tent and sit there and they'd, they'd always say, oh, I feel about 85% of them would say, I feel calmer yeah, or I feel my head be lighter. And then they would start. And then, so instead of me talking at them, then they would start asking me questions and I would just sit and answer questions as long as, as <laughs> you know, but that, that worked really well, but the talking at people and trying to get them, to, it just, it doesn't work. And it, I, it makes, it makes them tired and don't knock on other words, don't knock on closed doors. There's enough open doors Focus on the people mm. who are willing to whatever. It's exhausting to like try to knock on closer, especially schools are really tough. I've worked on schools for a long time and they're just laggards and, and challenging environments. So um, don't don't frustrate yourself. Don't waste your energy. Um, you know, try to live. Yeah, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. That's beautiful. Perfect. Thank you so oh much, Peter. I appreciate your, your, your vast knowledge and also your, your self-experimentation that is... Uh, very useful because yes, we're getting experimented on by the signals and we also need to experiment with different technologies that might support us. And th this yeah. is just the way it goes at the moment. Uh, and we don't have uh, millions of dollars to test all these devices, placebo control, this and that. We, we don't. So uh, people need help right now. And I know that this episode will be very special. And uh, I think among my most popular that people can go back to for several years looking at what are the easy solutions I could try right now? So I think it's going to give them a lot of hope. And uh, thank you for that. Yeah, my God, I'm getting the chills as you're saying that. Thank you for doing this. Sure, All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.